locked up for more than half his life. I'll prove to them that I'm a good person. Omar Khadr sits down for his first exclusive interview. See who I am as a person, not as a name. A documentary co-production, Omar Khadr, Out of the Shadows, tonight at 9 on CBC. I told you it would happen, and it is. Omar Khadr, the convicted, confessed al-Qaeda terrorist, is being turned into a celebrity by our pro Cotter media. In this case, it's the Toronto Star, Canada's largest newspaper, and the CBC, our state-run TV uh, network. They have produced a documentary about Omar Cotter. Documentary isn't the right word, though, because a documentary implies an objective retelling of facts. This is a propaganda video that would not have been more pro Cotter if the Taliban or Al-Qaeda had directed it themselves. Well, today, 3,500 words ran in the Toronto Star and a few tidbits of the documentary were released. The main part of it released tonight. I want to take you through some of it to show you just how gross this Team Cotter journalism is. Uh, 3,500 words and I did a word search for the word terrorism. It appears just twice but to mock those who would use it to disparage, oh he's no terrorist, in 3,500 words against a guy who was convicted of five war crimes including terrorism, they won't call him a terrorist. The word Taliban appears just once, but not for Omar Khadr, even though he was fighting with them. Uh, here's a videotape seized from Khadr's site when he was uh, seized in 2002, showing him building improvised explosive devices. He was Taliban, he was Al-Qaeda, that is what he was doing. But the most the star and the CBC can bring themselves to say is that he was acting as a translator for Taliban-linked people. Translator, he, he's building bombs. And Taliban-linked people? When he was captured in 2002, he was in a fort that was full of gunmen with grenades and, and handguns. How can you call them Taliban linked? They won't even bring themselves to say it was Taliban. They call him a translator. Uh, there were two translators that day who were sent by America, uh, the American forces, to this fort to say, look guys, come on out with your hands out. You won't be killed. Let's do a little truce here. Those two Afghans who approached the fort were assassinated execution style at point blank range. That's the interpreters here, but no, no. According to the Star and the CBC, Omar Khadr was just a translator. Uh, the word Al-Qaeda is only used, but not for Omar Khadr's dad. See, Omar Khadr's dad, Ahmed Khadr, was a terrorist. He was a financier who went from mosque to mosque in Canada recruiting money for terrorists. He recruited people, of course, recruited himself and his family. Ahmed Khadr himself was killed in a shootout with Pakistani anti-terrorism police, but the star won't even bring themselves to call Ahmed Khadr a terrorist. They actually, take a look at this, they call him a humanitarian worker. They really say that. I searched the 3,500 word article for the phrase bin Laden. He's not there. Even Ahmed Khadr, even though Ahmed Khadr was a friend of the Bin Laden family. Of course, that's deleted. That would be in a documentary. You would think that Omar Khadr and Ahmed Khadr and their links to Osama Bin Laden, the worst terrorist of the last 50 years, that that would make it into a documentary. But this is not a real documentary. This is a whitewash. Uh, they do quote Omar Khadr's mother and sister. Here's just a quick reminder of how odious they are. You believe the dying by the hand of your enemy because you believe in the and Depending because you're doing your it in the way of God of Allah that it's the best way to die. And my father had always wished that he would be killed. He wouldn't just die in his bed; that he'd be killed for for the sake of Allah. Remember, when we were very young, he used to say, "If you guys love me, make dua for me that pray for me that I'd get shahadat, which is being killed." Become a martyr. Yes. Your son Omar in Guantanamo is accused of killing an American soldier, a medic, with a hand grenade. Yes. If that is true, are you proud of him? Of course he defended himself. He just did not give any, you know. I, I thought they were very simple kids, but it turned to be they are not if so simple. If you were in that situation, what would you have done? Why does nobody say you killed three of his friends? Why does everybody say he killed an American soldier? Big deal. But what do they do with that? Well, they say Omar Khadr uh, they quote Omar Khadr saying, well, his sister and mom aren't very smart about what they're willing to say. Yeah, that's another way, uh, way of saying they're too honest. They're not playing the media as skillfully as Khadr himself is. That's what's in the so-called documentary that 
Taliban and Al Qaeda propaganda documents. But here's what's not in it. No questions like, what kind of Islam do you believe in? Do you believe in political Islam? Do you believe in Sharia law? Do you believe in Dawah, that is, evangelizing and spreading Islam? Of course they don't ask those questions, because those questions are too terrifying for regular people to, to know about. You've got to show Omar Khadr in a soft focus. Don't talk about his radical beliefs. Does he renounce the jihad? Omar Khadr has never renounced Islam or radical Islam. In fact, if you recall when he was released from jail a few weeks ago, he was asked, do you renounce jihad? And he said he doesn't believe in it right now. Right now, at this moment. Here, remember that clip? Can you categorically say that you denounce violent jihad, Omar? Yes. Is it? No, it's not something. No, it's, uh, it's not something I believe in right now. The star and the CBC were wiser than to ask him that question again because his answer was terrifying. I don't believe in it right now. Uh, do, does he believe in the Islamic State? Does he believe in bringing back the caliphate? Of course they don't ask that question. Does he regret what he did? Does he regret being a terrorist? Does he regret making improvised explosive devices? Does he regret throwing the grenade? Does he regret murdering a man? Does he regret anything? Of course they don't ask him that because he actually has never expressed regret. Let me throw you back to the press conference that he had a few weeks ago where the most he would say is the past is in the past. Take a look at this. And uh, there's, uh, there's nothing I can do with the past but I hope that the future can, uh, I can do something about the future. Yeah, of course the past is in the past. We all know that. But we can talk about the past and say you regret it or you renounce it. Omar Khadr won't, but the CBC and the Star gloss over that. They acknowledge that he will not renounce his father, the terrorist. He won't even acknowledge that his father was a terrorist, but they don't probe at that. I have a question for the Star and the CBC. What were the conditions that were put on them for this interview? What limits were their place? We know there were, because again, let me show you the unedited videotape of Cotter's interview a few weeks ago. Watch how Dennis Edney, Cotter's lawyer, advocate, and landlord, tells reporters in advance twice that if they dare ask questions that are too tough, he'll cut them off. Here, here's Dennis Edney saying that twice. I've had a long day, and I don't mind going back into that house. So, if you, so let's just be respectful here, okay? Do you hear me? Omar's going to say a few words. You can also ask him certain questions. If the questions become too intrusive, then I'll shut it down and we'll go back in the house. Did Dennis Edney tell the Toronto Star and the CBC that they couldn't ask him about his political and religious beliefs? That they couldn't ask him if he renounces terrorism or violence, if he expresses any regret? I don't know if Dennis Edney did. I know he told all the reporters that. But in the case of the CBC and the Toronto Star, I actually don't think he needed to tell them that because they're on Cotter's team. Why would they do anything to embarrass him? This was pure propaganda. Let me show you part of the clip that was teased out today that'll be in tonight's show. They have Omar Cotter talking about some unnamed jail guard who was really mean to him and how Omar Cotter has found it in his heart to forgive that mean jail guard. Omar Khadr's the bigger man. He's the victim who has forgiven. Here, take a look at this clip. This one guard in Guantanamo, he would go out of his way to just to, uh, you know, humiliate me and antagonize me. He was just trying to get me to do something, curse me, you know, insult me. And he was really getting under my skin. The thing is, if a person can inflict pain on another person and find pleasure in that, now that person must be going through a lot of problems, like mental problems. I don't know how he lives with his conscience, so he's probably living in, in worse pain than, uh, you know. That's pure propaganda, a fictitious anecdote designed to show how Omar Khadr is morally superior than the Americans, than the soldiers. 
than us. If he can forgive his jail guard, shouldn't we forgive Cotter? But it's a lie. You see, Omar Cotter was not a little lamb in jail. He was a vindictive, abusive prisoner who riled up other prisoners, other terrorists against the guards. For example, there was a black female jail guard. Well, Omar Khadr is a Muslim supremacist. He believes women should wear burqas and shadors. He, he doesn't believe in the equality of races or sexes. He's an anti-Semite. And so he called that black female uh, guard a bitch and a slave. Omar Khadr was not a little lamb abused by the guards. Omar Khadr abused the guards. That would be in a documentary, but this isn't a documentary. It's a whitewash. Omar Khadr wishes that that troubled guard would deal with his issues and Omar Khadr has forgiven him. Has Omar Khadr come to terms with and dealt with what he did to Christopher Spear, the US Army medic he murdered? Has Omar Khadr tried to make amends with Tabitha Spear, the widow, or the two orphan children, Taryn and Tanner Spear? Has he expressed any regret? Has he taken any responsibility? Of course not. And yet those are not plumbed in this propaganda piece because to have them in the story would take the victimhood away from Omar Khadr and onto the real murder victims. This is not a documentary. This is public relations. This is propaganda. It's unthinkable that we would see this kind of propaganda in the service of Paul Bernardo or any other murderer. But with the CBC and the Toronto Star, they actually mean to undermine our war against terrorism. The Toronto Star is a disgrace, but the CBC, well, that's even worse because that's your and my tax dollars at work for Al-Qaeda and the Taliban. For the Rebel.media, I'm Ezra Levant.